Hello and welcome to the next 24 hours. We're going to be talking about goal setting in a new and exciting way. I have been setting goals for years and I've done hundreds of workshops. Today I'm going to take you through that process to make your goals and your dreams a reality. Let's jump into the next 24 hours. Welcome to the next 24 hours where I'm going to give you real information you can really use to transform your life and work one day at a time. I'll be your host, Curtis Zimmerman. Well, hello, I'm so excited you're here. I want to jump right into this goal setting stuff because it's so important to move the needle in your life, in your relationships, and with where you're going. Now, remember, I've been setting goals now for over 30 years. Every year I visit those goals, I look at those, so I understand the power they can have. I've also done hundreds of workshops, goal setting workshops in the past to help companies, teams, and individuals make their dreams come true. Because I talk about living the dream, but you have to do the work. Remember the difference between a goal and a dream, right? A goal has a deadline, which means you have to do the work in order to make that dream come true. Here we go. This is the story of how you are going to write the next chapter and make your dreams come true. Chapter number one, reflect. Chapter number one, what you're going to do is you're going to reflect on your past. You're going to reflect on what's in your life right now. And if you only had seven years to live, if you knew that now you're on the porch and you're looking back and you have your dog next to you and you're looking back over your life, what things did you do? What things didn't you do? And what things do you wish you would have done if you could do it all over again? Well, it's not too late. You're not on that porch yet. But you have to reflect on your life and really think about how you're spending your time. You know, do you want to travel to 50 countries before you die? Do you want to drive that Porsche that you've always dreamed of having? Do you want to have a really true and deep talk and relationship with your son or daughter? Do you want to go out on a limb and truly learn how to play the guitar knowing that you know you're just not you're not very coordinated and you've been telling yourself that for years? In order for you to know what that is, you first have to reflect. Now reflection is a very important part of goal setting because as you start projecting, not reflecting, but projecting in your mind what it is you want to create, you're also going to have to use that same muscle. And that's thinking through. Now, remember that great athletes and many, many Olympic athletes, what they do is they sit and they visualize what it is they're going to do over and over and over in their mind. And they visualize, high divers visualize that dive over and over in their mind before they actually get out and do it with their physical body. That's what's coming up next. So I've done the reflection and I've thought about my past and I've thought about my future. So reflecting isn't just the past, it's past and future. And now I'm ready to do the next thing and that is dream. What does dream mean? Dream means imagine if you could be every man and you could be every woman. And every single thing you've ever seen someone else do, you know it's realistic. It's realistic because they achieved it. They did something in their life in order to make that thing you're seeing actually happen. So it could be surfing. It could be playing an instrument. It could be skydiving. It could be making a beautiful piece of artwork. It could be writing a book. It could be whatever it is. Realize that when you hear or see what somebody else has done, they've done a process in their life. They've given so many years in their life in order to make that thing a reality. And you could too. So you have to be willing to dream. One of the things I did as a mime, remember I was a mime for 25 years. First, I had to sit quietly. And if you want to dream and you want to reflect and you want to think about the world, you have to be willing to sit quietly. And I love to sit quietly and really think about what's going on around me. Now, the other thing I had to do as a mime is I had to take on other people's persona. 
I had to literally be every person. As I acted out different shows and I acted out different parts, I had to think about how would that person walk? How would that person react in this situation? How would that person act if they were really angry? And when I worked in amusement parks, I literally would walk behind people and I would mimic them and I'd walk the way they walked. And by doing that year after year after year, I realized literally I could become any of those other people over time. And I want you to understand that so could you. You can become somebody really in shape and somebody who's amazing. You could become somebody who's really well read. You could become somebody that's 300 pounds overweight. You could become whatever it is you want over time. If you mimic the behaviors of that person, you can slowly manifest into that person you want to be. So as a mime, I chose to go ahead and think and listen first and then adopt into other people. And I want you to think about who do you want to become. With goal setting so often, it's about who you want to become and then what you want to achieve. Because if you want to achieve these things, you have to become part of what it takes to do that. You may have heard this before. You know, every person is basically a manifestation of the five people they spend their time around. Whatever five people you spend the most time around, you become part of what all of those five people are. And I say some of that's true. Sometimes you're in a situation where you're stuck with five people and you need to get out of that and go into another group. And that's a whole different thing. But I would say that if you do want to change and the the reflection of those five people aren't exactly what you want, you may have to give them fewer lines and move in to the next chapter. And that's what I'm excited about because we did the reflecting Now, we did some dreaming. Now, the dreaming part is really important because you have to dream big. You have to think about where you are now and what you want to create. Dream big. Go big or go home. We've all heard that. With goal setting, it's so critical that you dream big. Dream big. Now we have to get to the nitty gritty and that set those goals. Now, when we set our goals, it's funny because I have a whole goal setting workshop. I have sheets and sheets of things you fill out. You have your personal goals. Uh, I want to eat these foods. I want to walk like this. I want to read a book a month. I want So these are all personal goals. Then we have our relationship goals. I want to spend more quality time with my kids. I want to have deeper conversations with my wife. I want to build into my marriage. Okay. Then we also have financial goals. I want to make X amount of money because of this. Remember, nobody sets goals to make more money. All money does, this is so important, all money does is give you more options. You don't want to make a bunch of money because you have these little tiny pieces of paper with dead presidents on them and you have a giant stack of them. That's not the goal. That does you absolutely nothing. What it does give you is more options in your real world. By taking those little pieces of paper, you can fly somewhere. By taking those little pieces of paper, you can buy a jet. By taking those little pieces of paper, you can go to the movies and actually pay for somebody else to come with you. So the pieces of paper are not the goal. The goal is what are those pieces of paper going to allow you to do? And that's why you need them. Okay. Set the goal. What does that mean? Set the goal. What is it that I want to achieve that is going to drive me to make that action happen? So when we talk about the setting the goals and we talk about these different areas, you, your relationships, your finances, your big dreams for the future. One of the ones that people always have a hard time with is the financial part. And the thing part. So it's okay to say, I want to make a million dollars. I want to make 500,000. I want to make a thousand. Whatever it is, I don't care. But then we go to the thing goal. And it's so funny how people get really weird when it comes to this. And that's why I want to talk about it for just a minute. Listen, the world is full of things. There are cars. There are jets. There are houses. There are full neighborhoods. There are giant skyscraper buildings. There are mountains. There are... Somebody right now owns all of it. Somebody does. And you can put a value on that person because they own that hotel, because they own that office complex, because they own that skyscraper. Based on that, you can say, well, that means that's that kind of person. And I need for you to know that's a total lie. 
That's something manufactured in your own head that's holding you back from if your goal is to own 26 properties that you use as rentals to pay for your retirement one day, don't add to that. That means I have to become this kind of person. I have to be greedy. I have to, that's a lie. I want you to understand that when you start setting your goals, you know, I really want a boat. Don't put any like value proposition, but if I have a boat, then it means that I'm not helping the hungry. If I have a boat, that's a lie. You can own a boat and still be an amazing, giving, loving person. So when you start saying the things that you want to have in your real life, feel good about it. Don't feel shame about it. It's okay that you want these things. Here's what I always tell people when it comes to goal setting. The more you have, the more you have to give away. The more you have, the more options you have to help others. And if you've been given these things and you use them just for you, that's your choice. But you also can take these things and have other people enjoy what boating is about that would never go on a boat because they can't afford a boat. Invite them onto your boat and show them the amazing experience of being on a boat and all of the time that can be spent and all of the time that can be spent and all of the enjoyment of living out in the water. Very, very important. When you say the things you want, don't hold back. If part of your lifestyle is a boat or a house or a plane or you want to own your own island, don't hold back. Just write it down. We'll figure out how we're going to get there later. Hey, it's Curtis. I just wanted to jump in really quickly and let you know, I hope you're enjoying the next 24 hours, but I love spending 24 hours with people. I call it a VIP day, and a VIP day is where you're the star of everything that we talk about. You hang out with me. We go and do a deep dive on your future and what it means to make your dreams come true, to truly live the dream. If you'd like to learn more about how to do that, it's really simple. Just visit my website, curtisimmerman.com, click on consultant, and then there's a little tab. You click on VIP days. That's going to bring up all the information about being able to spend 24 hours with me and taking your life, your mission, your goals to the next level. Check it out. Now let's get back to the next 24 hours. Now, you have these categories. You have you, you have your relationships, you have your physical you know, health, you might have your spirituality, you want to spend a certain amount of time on reading about whatever that is, and you have your things, and you have your finances, and all of those have all the goals written down. Now, the question is, how are we going to take those and make them into something I'm going to actualize? How can I take those. And what we do is we then just simply go through everything, let's just say with relationship. We're going to go through all the things you said you wanted to spend time on in your goals and relationships, and we're going to give them a one, a two, or a three. Let's see, how important is it that you deepen your relationship with your daughter? Well, aha, that's a three. How important is it that you spend more time with your dog? Hmm. I'm going to give that a one. I'm going to go out on a limb. So you're going to do that and go through the whole list. And on the thing goals, you're going to do the same thing, every one of those. And then all the threes of each of those pages are going to be moved on to one page. And now I really have my master list of my goals. So all the threes carry over. And why is it so important that we only take the threes? Because if it's a one, spending more time with our dog, we're not going to change our lifestyle to spend more time with our dog. At least most of us aren't. But if it's a three and I realize I'm an old person on the porch looking back on my life and I don't have a deep relationship with my daughter and I could have, boy, that's something that's motivating me to stop some things, put my phone down, drive her to school even though I don't have to so that we can have real conversations in the car. It will change behavior. So it's got to be a three in order to do that. Now we have the list of all of our threes and now we have to take action for each of those threes. And that's very simple. We're going to take a giant table in the banquet of our life. We're going to roll it into the room and we're going to put down 
all of the threes on that table. And every week what you do is you go into the banquet of your life and you sit down and you you eat, you take time to eat, you rest, you take time to rest. And each of those are a table with that written on it. Oh, I'm going to spend some time in relationship. That's where I sit with the people and I sit and talk about relationship. I work on my finances and, and oh, and I, I have a job. I go and I work. Each of those tables are very succinct in what they do. Now I have to take a table and roll it in with my goals from this year. And I put all my threes on that table and I have to visit it every day, think about them, and I have to take action with those every day. What does taking action mean? Taking action means if I want to work on my finances and I see, uh, let's see, my big goal is I want to get a new car. Well, the only way the new car is going to come into my life is if I take action each day and I save a little bit of money. I stop going to Starbucks four times a week. I stop just wasting two, three, four, fifteen thousand dollars at Christmas buying gifts for people that don't really need them and depleting my own finances because I'm a giver. Instead I'm going to make them gifts and something that I think is amazing and they can like or not like just like everything else. But I'm going to take that money and put it aside so I'm able to help some of my dreams come true in order to get this car. Or I'm going to go ahead and work a part time job or maybe I'm going to put some things on eBay that have some value that I'm not using anymore and take that and put it directly into an account for that car. So taking action to make that thing happen. Remember, goals and dreams, goals have a deadline. Here's the deadline. And I have to have this pile of money by that date. I have to take action by sitting at that banquet table every day thinking on it or every day actually doing something to create a little bit more money to put into that pile toward that goal. Same thing with my relationships. It's not just thinking about, oh yeah, we should have a date night every Friday night. It's understanding that the average couple only has between 6 and 12 minutes a day that they're by themselves and that they actually communicate with one another. That's a scary, scary stat. But people get up in the morning and they're get, they're busy and they're talking to one another, but it's more about tasking. It's not about how are you, how are you feeling, what's going on with you today. It's more about the task. I'm going to do this. You're going to do that. I'm going to go here. You're going to go there. We're going to see Tom and Kim. We're going to spend an hour with them. We're going to go home We're gonna and we're going to... No, no, no. What we're going to do is we're going to take that 8, 12, 15 minutes... And just remember why you fell in love. Do you remember what was so amazing about that person that you just couldn't stand it? You saw them and like, this is the most amazing person on the planet. And I just want to hang out with them. And I just want to understand the way they see the world. And I want to understand how they're so loving. And the only way you can get back there is if you don't let the task now of living your life together get in the way of appreciating who they are as a person. And you do that by spending quality time together. How do you do that? You do that by sitting at that banquet table that says relationship with their name on it. You have to do it. You have to think about it. Otherwise, before you know it, times have changed and you don't even know that person anymore. So we have to take action, real action every week, every day to make that happen. Last thing when it comes to goal setting is measuring. You have to be able to measure. Here's where I am. Here's the starting line. And here's where I'm going to run to, whatever that goal is. So here I am in my relationship. It's a good relationship and we communicate. But the measurable of that is, ah, I'm going to smile more. We're going to laugh more. We're going to spend more physical time together. We're going to not talk about tasks. We're going to talk about emotions. We're going to talk about the way we're feeling more than just what it takes to pay the bills or to pick up the laundry or whatever it is. We're going to actually spend more time in relationship. That is the measurable that I want to use. Each of those goals need to have some kind of measurable, you know, a measuring stick from where I am to where I want to go. So you know along the way whether or not you're reaching the goal for real. I hope that you found this information valuable. I also want you to know, don't listen to this and then go do nothing because you wasted your time. Instead, I want you to listen to this and then I have some things I want to send your way. I have some more information on goal setting 
And I especially want you to embrace the 24-hour challenge. All right, well, here we go. Time for the 24-hour challenge. Now, remember, goals are great, and everyone has dreams and goals, but what's the action step you're going to take to make it really happen? Well, I have a free gift for you. It's normally $15. It's going to be free to you for listening today. Simply go to curtiszimmerman.com backslash new script, and you'll see that there's something there for you to download. Go ahead and click on that, download the first few pages, and it'll get you jump-started into goal setting. I hope that you take action and you actually go and download this and then do what it says to do because that's the way you get to live your dream. Hey, thank you for listening to the next 24 hours. It would mean a lot to me if you found this content today valuable that you share it with your friends. Leave me a review. I'd love to hear from you. And if you want to learn more about what I do, it's really simple. Just go to CurtisZimmerman.com. Remember, in order to live the dream, you have to make the next 24 hours count. The clock is ticking. 